All righty then. I hope you guys had a good week. I had a fantastic week. One of the reasons why I had such a fantastic week was because um, some of you guys know I have an accountability group with uh, some of our graduates. You know those STEM graduates who go to international school, so they graduated STEM, but they still haven't graduated high school. And so uh, they have nothing to do on Sundays. And so I tell them to come here, and then we have an accountability group. Me and, and them, we meet together. And uh, we don't do the Bible study because they already finished all their Bible study uh, because they graduated. They, they've gone through the whole Bible study course, so they're done. And so then what do we do? Well, what I ask them to do is I ask them to write, me, write a uh, quiet time journal, okay? And so what they do is every week they have their quiet time and they write their quiet time on their, on their notebook and then they give it to me. And then I spend time reading and then sometimes responding. So they have to have two notebooks, right? So they come on Sunday, they give me their notebooks, and then I read it. And, you know, but that goes on throughout the week. So during that week, they have another notebook that they're working on. And then next week, we exchange, we, we trade. And they get, give me their new notebooks. I give them the old one where I made comments and things like that. And I uh, read some of the stuff that they're going through. And some of their, you know, some people, they write all these deep biblical insights. You know, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. Other people, they just write their thoughts and like kind of, oh, this happened today and that happened today. They kind of write a, a journal type of thing. Anyways, it's awesome because I get to really see what they're, what's going on in their lives. Okay, at least a little bit, um, whatever they're willing to, to reveal. It's always difficult when you know somebody's going to read it to be completely 100% honest, you know, so then I got to try to tell them, pretend I'm not going to read it. But how do you pretend someone's not going to read it when you know they're going to read it? I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, but that's what they're doing. And so the reason why I share this is this. Um, every once in a while, some of you guys, you email me or you send me a message on, on Facebook or you guys do something like that. And and I really like it. I really like it when you um, just kind of, you don't even have to, you know, Pastor Philip, you know, whatever, whatever, tell me everything that happened today, and, and I don't even know why I'm writing this, and I don't even expect you to, you know, help me or whatever, whatever. That's fine. If you just need to tell somebody something, if you want to, you know, just let me know. And I, I'll try to respond. I, I can't respond to everybody all the time. Uh, but just know at least I'm reading it. At least at the moment that I read it, if you ask for prayer or if you're going through some hardships or whatever, at least at that moment I prayed for you. Somebody prayed for you and somebody knows what's going on, okay? Uh, it's, a, there, it's possible that I might not remember, you know, three months. Some, some people do this, right? Some people, um, I was talking to a STEM grad um, last year and she said, Pastor, when I was, and she's a STEM grad, okay? She graduated. And she was talking about something that I said to her in eighth grade, um, you know, that she d disagreed with. And I have no idea. Actually, that particular time, I actually remembered what I said. But most of the time, I don't, right? Um, so, but still, the thing that I'm trying to say is keep in touch with me. Let me know about who you are and, and, and things like that, okay? Because that's what I'm here for. I might not be able to be a perfect listener or a perfect mentor or a perfect uh, person to solve all your problems, but at least somebody knows. At least somebody's praying for you, okay? Uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys. That's why I had such a great week this week, even though I was really busy and oh, so many things going on, but uh, yeah, okay. All right, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14, uh, verses 22 to 33. It's kind of long this time. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. And we're going to attempt to read this entire passage together in one voice. We're going to try this. Okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Ready to begin. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, 
Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Amen. We're just going to go straight into the Word of God today. Okay, I have a lot that I want to share with you. In this passage, Jesus preaches to a whole bunch of people, and then he tells the disciples, it's time to leave. Why don't you guys go on ahead? Because I need to spend some time by myself to pray. Okay? And so the disciples get on a boat, and they're, they're crossing the lake, and Jesus is on a mountainside by himself, and he prays. He dismisses the pro- crowd that he was preaching to, and then he prays. In the middle of the night, as the disciples are on their boat, here's their situation. The wind started to blow, and it was against the boat, so then they couldn't go where they were trying to go because of the wind, and they were struggling against the wind. But in the middle of the night, the disciples look out, and they see Jesus walking on the water. We're so used to hearing this story that we're like, no big deal, right? Jesus walks on the water, whatever, right? But imagine, imagine if you were in the bathroom, right, brushing your teeth before you go to bed at night. You're just brushing your teeth, and suddenly the lights turn off, boom. And then all of a sudden, I appear (laughs) in the bathroom with you. And I'm sitting on the toilet, and I say, yo, what's up? How would that make you? It would freak you out, because there's no way that I could be there, right? How in the world did I get there? But it's me, friendly me. You know me, right? But it would still freak you out. You'd be like, whoa, and you'd probably pass out or something, right? (sighs) There's no way Jesus could be on this lake. It makes no sense. So the disciples, they're they're trying to, I don't know, were they rowing? What were they doing? They were trying to get to the other side. The wind's blowing, and then they look up, and Jesus is on the water in the middle of the night. It freaked them out. Holy cow, how can this be? Well, we're so used to, oh yeah, Jesus walked on the water, yeah. But this is an impossible situation that was happening. So their circumstances, their environment, they're they're, they're trying to get somewhere. There's a a strong wind, and they can't go where they're trying to go. And then Jesus appears, and they're freaked out. Look at verse um, 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And cried out in fear. This is a natural reaction. When we see something scary, when we see something that doesn't make sense, when we see something that might cause danger to us, to be afraid, to be terrified is a natural thing. That's what we do. They were terrified. And they said, it's a ghost because there's no other way to explain it. So from the disciples' point of view, They were watching a ghost, something scary, something terrible, something that could harm them. It's a ghost. Verse 27, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Here's the thing. Jesus doesn't say to the disciples, man, what's wrong with you guys? Why are you afraid? You guys, you guys are, are being irrational. Don't you know it's me? Don't you know? He, he didn't rebuke them. He didn't say, you call yourself Christians and you're afraid just because you see somebody walking on the lake in the middle of the night? That, that causes you fear? You're a Christian. What are you afraid of? Jesus doesn't rebuke them for this. Jesus understands that from their point of view, from the disciples' point of view, they have to respond this way. They see something that's impossible. They see something that can possibly harm them. And so they were terrified. 
So Jesus, instead of saying, you guys are, you guys are not Christians, you guys aren't real, he says, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. What Jesus does here is he says this, look, I know what you guys see. You guys are seeing a ghost. You guys think that you're seeing a ghost, something that can harm you, but let me tell you what reality is. Reality is, it's me. Take courage. Don't be afraid. It's me. You know, I think we experience this in our lives very often. When something happens in our lives, when, when we experience something that we didn't expect, when something you know, terrible happens or something very difficult happens, and we look at it and we get terrified or we get angry or we get confused because from our reality, from what we see, this is what it is. It's a bad thing. It's a terrible thing. It's an impossible thing. But Jesus says, hey, don't worry. It's me. Jesus tells them what the real reality is. A lot of times our, our view of reality is distorted because of our sin, because of the sinfulness of the world, because of our weakness and because of our lack of faith. But Jesus, he shows them. He gives them a shift in their perspective. Instead of calculating things and looking at things from a human point of view, okay, we're on the boat, we're in the middle of a lake, there's a person walking on the lake. First of all, people can't walk on the lake, and, and this just doesn't make any sense. So in my reality, that must be a ghost, and they must be here to harm me. But Jesus changes that. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Verse 21 Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, when Peter heard that it was Jesus, and he recognizes Jesus' voice, and he sees Jesus, he still can't, you know, it just doesn't make, he looks like Jesus, he talks like Jesus, he sounds like Jesus, but he's walking on the water. Some people look at this and they say, oh, he's testing Jesus. He's testing him. Jesus, if it's really you, then, you know, you know how we do this all the time, right? God, if you want me to go to church on Sunday morning, you're going to miraculously wake me up at 3.30 in the morning so that I can finish all my homework, and after I'm done with my homework, then I'm, you know, we test God. You know? Have you ever, like, put an eraser on your desk and said, God, if you really exist, move this eraser. Have you guys done that before? I have. You know? We test God. I don't think this is testing God. Here's what I think Peter is doing. I think Peter really wants to believe that this is Jesus on the water. Because if it's not Jesus, I mean, something terrible might happen here. Some spirit, some ghost walking on the water, walking towards the boat. Oh, you know? And he really wants to believe that it's Jesus. But he doesn't want to do something, he doesn't want to do anything out of his own imagination, out of his own will, out of his own decision-making process. He's saying, he doesn't say, Jesus, if it's really you, I'm going to step out on the boat right now and you better make sure that I don't sink. That's not what Peter says. Peter says, if it's you, you tell me what to do. You tell me to come out to you. And when you command it, I'm going to do it. You guys understand the difference in thinking, right? It's not, God, if it's really you, then you're going to keep me from sinking, right? So I'm just going to step out on the boat, and then I'm going to test you to see if you protect me. That's not the attitude. The attitude is, Jesus, if it's really you, you command me. You tell me to do something, and I'll do it. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Jesus' answer is not, oh, Peter, that's great, that's wonderful. And Jesus, is, he says, come. <laughs> I, I love that. You know, no confusion, no flowery words, no, just come. That's awesome. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Remember the situation that they were in? There's a strong wind, and they can't get to where they're trying to go. And there's a strong wind. 
And when Peter steps off out of the boat and he's walking on the water, he notices the wind. He sees the wind, which is kind of cool because when's the last time you saw wind? Uh, anyway, he, he sees the wind and he starts to get afraid. In our walk with the Lord, when, in our walk with God, in our life of faith, there are times when we recognize or when we see our circumstances and we get afraid. We start to fear. There are times it happens, right? I mean, look at Peter. He's standing on water. You know, he goes, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. And then Jesus says, come. He says, all right. He goes out and then he goes, oh, man. I'm walking on water, all the wind, and he notices. Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with noticing your situation and your circumstances, right? There's nothing wrong with looking at what's going on in your life and and, and, and observing it. There's nothing wrong with it. But we should not fear the circumstances and the situation that we're in. See, Peter, this would have been a perfect story for Peter If Peter had walked on the water, went to Jesus, and then held his hand, and hello, Jesus, and then they walked back together onto, forget the boat, you know, walk all the way to to shore, right? I mean, that would have been a perfect story. But that's not what happens. Because Peter, he sees the situation, and instead of saying, this is wonderful that I am walking on water, despite the fact that, you know, People can't walk on water and and, and all this wind and whatever. Despite all of this, I am walking on water because of Jesus. Man, this is great. Man, this is fantastic. Jesus, let's go. This would have been perfect. You guys want to live a life of faith? There are times when God allows you to do things that are impossible, that you thought just cannot happen in your life. You know, when I, when I was a radio show host for five years in Korea, it was a, 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 I was doing it in Korean and in English, and, you know, when we first started it, it was impossible. There's no way somebody like me can do radio. Actually, the producer says, no, somebody like you has to do radio because nobody can see you. <laughs> they can only hear you. Um, <laughs> But I thought, there's no way somebody like me, who have no, no experience in media, no experience doing radio, my Korean at that time was so bad, right? I mean, to record a one-hour show that has like 20 minutes of music in it, so it's just 40 minutes of actual stuff, it took six or seven hours to record it because I was so bad. It was impossible. But when God tells you to do something, and in the middle of doing it, you realize, oh man, I'm doing something that really ought to be impossible for me. When that happens, instead of saying, oh, what am I doing? This is impossible. And instead of giving up, we should say, God, thank you so much that you are allowing me to do this. You know, let's say you hate math, but this semester you're doing really well in math. And you're like, how is this possible? Uh, You know, but you prayed. God, I really need to get good grades because I want to glorify your name through my studies, right? There are these English vocabulary words that in the past you just couldn't memorize, but now it's just like boom, 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 boom. And you're like, what's going on, right? But instead of being like, look at me, uh, I can memorize words. Instead of doing that, or instead of saying, wait a minute, I'm not good at this. I'm not supposed to be good at this. So, And then you just give up and you look at your circumstances. Instead of doing that, We need to keep our eyes on Jesus and continue to take those steps toward Him. Here's a good thing about Peter, though, right? Peter, when he's walking on the water and then he realizes his situation and then he gets all scared, he doesn't say, oh, you know, what am I going to do? And then start, you know, swimming or trying to run back to the boat or he doesn't do that. He calls out to Jesus. That's That's what saved him here, right? He found himself in the middle of the lake, sinking. And the thing that causes him to be saved, the thing that saves him, that keeps him from drowning, is the fact that he called out to Jesus. Sometimes we we do our acts of faith. Sometimes we, we, you know, we go and we try to do something by faith. Everybody says you can't do it. 
Your circumstances tell you that you're not going to make it. But you say, no, I have faith. God told me. And you go because Jesus commanded me. And you go and you try to do something. And then in the middle of it, you start to sink. And your faith starts to weaken. In times like that, you don't say, ah, oh, I give up. You know, this is the... You say, Lord, help me. God, you help me. You save me. Verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Was Jesus angry? How do you read this? What's your emotion when you read it? Do you say, you have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Is this how you read it? That's not how I read it. I read it like this. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? You don't have to doubt me. Why do you have such little faith? Come here, let's go. I read it this way because I think if Jesus were really angry, he would have just let Peter drown. <laughs> you know, you have little faith. You don't deserve me. You don't deserve to follow me. Man, I had higher hopes for you. I thought, you know, you had more potential than this. You just drown. I'm going to, where's, where's your brother? You know, I'm going to get somebody else. That's not what Jesus does. Now, I don't think he's angry. I think he's teaching him. Basically, the thing is, you came this far. You came this far. Why are you giving up? You came this far. Why do you now start to be afraid of your circumstances? You came this far. You know, when we read the story, when we read this part of the Bible, we, you know, we, we have that, ah, Peter moment. We have lots of those moments when we read the Bible. We go, ah, Peter. Ah, Peter. Denying Jesus again. Ah, Peter. You know, saying some dumb things. He says some dumb things, too, in the Bible. And we go, ah, Peter. This, this is an ah, Peter moment. But think about this. The dude walked on water. When's the last time you walked on water by faith? Jesus says, you walked on water. You, you could have done so much more. We know that later on, Peter does so much more. He becomes a huge leader, really strengthening the church and giving his life in the end for Christ. The point of this whole passage, or the point of this sermon is this. Peter took a step of faith. He wasn't entirely successful, but he took that step of faith. And these are things that Jesus knows and he notices. Later on, Jesus says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You know, a lot of times Peter failed. He wasn't a perfect Christian. But one thing that he did do is he did take steps of faith. And I think this is a challenge for all of us to take that step of faith, to do something that everybody tells you is impossible, to do that thing that everybody tells you you can't do. When Jesus says, come, What are we supposed to say? A lot of us say, well, Jesus, not right now because I'm busy. Jesus, not right now because my faith isn't big enough. Jesus, not yet because of this and that. Or or Jesus, I'll go, but uh, can I just go like on like a boat or on water skis or something? Can I have some other things? And that's not, no, Jesus says, come, you say, okay. That's the way things work. In a life of faith. I know you guys have some tough times. I know you have some tough decisions to make. I know you go through some difficult times that really challenge your faith. But God knows that even better than I do. And God knows it even better than you do. And sometimes your reality is not real. It's not the real reality. Your reality, our reality many times, is what the world tells us reality is. 
But the minute Jesus says, the minute Jesus says, take courage, don't be afraid, it is I, our whole perspective on reality ought to just completely change. Because it's Jesus. It's okay to see your circumstances, the the hardship and the difficulties. It's okay to see that. But don't be afraid of it. Be challenged by it. Be encouraged by it. Be strengthened by it. That despite those difficulties, God is leading you forward. That's awesome. That, that's the kind of God who loves us, and that's the kind of God who calls us as his children. Take steps of faith. You know, it's po- popular to say, you know, take the leap of faith, but you don't have to take a leap of faith. You, oh, you, take a step. Take a step. Most of us, we have a difficult enough time taking that step of faith. But once we do, once we do take that step of faith, man, God is so awesome. And we start to experience. You know, I could imagine Peter 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when he's being persecuted by the Romans or the Jews, when he's persecuted for his faith, and people ask him, hey, Peter, how is it that you could still remain faithful to God? even though you're facing so many difficulties and so much opposition. Peter, how is it that you can still have faith in God? And I could imagine Peter saying, dude, I walked on water. I walked on water. This difficulty, this hardship, this thing that people say I can't do, it's nothing. I could imagine him saying that because he took that step of faith. I pray that it could be like that for all of us. Take that step of faith. Later on, when somebody says, man, aren't you having a hard time? You say, look, dude, I, I, I went through that already in my life, and God was there for me. As we continue to think about Jesus giving his life for us on the cross, for people as unfaithful as we are. So let's, that, let's take that step of faith towards the Lord. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the, the examples that you, you show us in your word all the time of how uh, we ought to, not, not just how we ought to live our life as Christians, but how we can live, what we can do, what is possible. We pray this morning that you would change some of our perspectives about, about life, change the way in which we look at life in many different areas. Lord, when you call us, help us to obey. And help us to experience your awesome miracles that happen when we take steps of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.